Uh oh. There we go. What is going on, guys? How are y'all doing? This is my very first live stream fishing tutorial. So, if there are a few mistakes, bear with me. All right. Today's live stream. Hold on. How is the audio first for everyone? Everyone good? Audio good? Audio is good. Is the picture clear? I should have 5G coverage for this video, so the picture should be like an HD. If it's not, please let me know. All right, so what I'm going to do, the, the purpose of this tutorial, I have my notes here because if I don't have notes, I'll just ramble on. Go vegan. Um, uh, if, I, if I don't, sorry, that was a comment that came up. Um, if I don't have notes, I'll just ramble on forever and ever. So this is my very first live stream trout tutorial. My name is Ace or Asa. Most people call me Ace. Um, and I've been fishing since I was young. Since I was like three years old, we have pictures of me when I was a little boy fishing. And I love it. It's my, I think it's the greatest sport in the world. And now I have a YouTube channel. Just reach 100,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for that. And this is the first fishing tutorial live stream. So, what I'm going to do with this, I have all my trout stuff here, and I'm just going to show you guys my trout stuff, take you through it, and hopefully give you guys some tips so that you guys can catch more trout as well. Let's get started. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come over here. We're going to get personal. I could show it from far away, but I'm going to go, um, uh, I'm going to show you guys up close all the stuff I have here. Now, this video is not comprehensive um, in that... Um, I'm not going to do like fly fishing. I'm not a, like a trout fishing professional. Um, this is just me um, sharing with you guys basically how I trout fish. And it's basically just trout fishing bait for beginners. And so if you're new to fishing and you want to get into it more and uh, you want to catch more trout, this is for you. If you already know how to trout fish, you'll probably know a lot of this stuff. So let's get started here. First thing I'm going to do is turn the camera around. All right, so first thing on the table here, we have a nice little bit of stuff here on the table. I have my jerk baits. I have all my spinners. We got bait. We got plastics. And then I'll cover the equipment that I use. I have a couple different fishing rods that I use. So first thing we have here are jerk baits. Now these, um, if you guys are new to trout fishing, jerk baits catch the biggest trout usually, especially when you're spin fishing. Um, these just, I mean, these are killer, killer baits. These are small sinking Rapala jerk baits. Uh, as you can see here, it says sinking on there. They're countdown. Um, they're not very big at all. They're only about two inches and two inch jerk baits. Maybe three is about the most you want to go with trout because otherwise they just don't chase big uh, they just don't chase big jerk baits. I've done a lot of experiments with different types, and it seems like the smaller kind get big trout, and uh, and you, um, I just get big trout, and they're a great bait. I only use three different colors: gold, rainbow trout color, and brown trout color. And the funny thing about it is, when you use um, rainbow trout color jerk baits, you'll actually catch way more rainbow trout than brown trout. If you switch to brown jerk baits or a brown trout uh, jerk baits, you'll get way more brown trout. It's really it's kind of a strange thing. I don't. I guess can trout are just. Uh, I don't guess they are. I know that they are cannibals, and so that's just kind of a funny thing. And then I always keep a gold jerk bait on me as well, because um, uh, because on the gold jerk baits, when you th th those will get like the biggest trout. And they're great for when you are, um, uh, they're great for when the water's dark. So I only keep these three on me. There are all kinds of other colors out there, but just if you have to pick one, if I had to pick only one of these to fish with all year, I would definitely go with the rainbow trout colored one. Now let's go to spinners. So here we have a MEPS spinner. This is, if you guys... Um, know any history about fishing. MEPS was one of the first ones to come out with the, I think they kind of invented the spinner. They've been around for like a thousand years. And this is a basic, basic MEPS spinner. Fantastic bait. If you are at the, when you're at Cabela's and you're thinking about what spinner do I get, go for a MEPS spinner. 
get like a 3 16th ounce or an eighth ounce and you can't go wrong. That is just like the most common, wonderful little spinner right there. Universal, great, great little bait. Now, I also carry obviously a huge variety of them with me. These aren't actually all the different ones that I have. These are just, um, these are just my favorite ones. I've actually got the biggest trout ever on this Silver Blue Fox spinner. I highly recommend that one. You can get any of these spinners, by the way, at Walmart. You don't even have to, um, uh, you don't have to go to a Cabela's or Sportsman's and pay top dollar. Go to a Walmart and they will have, um, they will have all of these baits here. And a lot of times they're cheaper at Walmart than at all the other places. So, I use Blue Fox. I have a purple one there that I've done okay on, but mostly I always reach for the silver at first. In fact, a lot of times when I'm out fishing, the order in which I use these is I'll always try like a silver uh, spinner first. Trout just really love the bright, you can see how bright it is there. Trout love the flash, uh, the flash of it. And um, it's just, it's a great, it gets their attention. And a lot of times what you can do is you can be fishing in an area with a silver spinner and you'll see trout at least following it. If they're not outright biting it, they'll at least be following it. So you know there are trout in the area. And then you can switch to maybe one of these other ones that they're more willing to bite. Like this This is a little bit more subtle um, bait. Uh, but so this is just a great one to start off with. I highly recommend the Blue Fox one. As far as expense goes, well, you know, I'll get into that at, at the end. So we got MEPS, we got Blue Fox, and then I also I'll always keep these these are killer. Uh, these are called rooster tail spinners. Again, you can find these at Walmart. You can find these anywhere. And um, spinners are fantastic uh, for uh, the, uh, sorry, rooster tails are fantastic for trout. They have that little bit of hair right on the end that you can see. Uh, they have treble hooks. So they're pretty much, they have nice little treble hooks. Anyway, the, I won't get into that. Some some uh, spinners just have one hook on the back, but we'll, that's too, uh, we'll just keep it to the basics for now. Yellow is my favorite. As you can see, I even have two of them. I always keep a lot of yellow um, on there, and uh, or a lot of yellow. In fact, if you look at any trout baits, whether it's corn or like all these different plastics, yellow is just a great color for trout. So um, if you, when you're at the store and you guys are going, which ones do I get? You know, what I'm going for trout. Always go with something with some yellow in it, and you can um, pretty much. Uh, you could pretty much guarantee that it's going to work most of the time. So we got a whole bunch of rooster tails here. One thing that's great about rooster tails is that they're cheaper than a lot of these. So for example, we have Panther Martins and Blue Fox. These run around four bucks each. Um, quite expensive for a little spinner. And these are about two fifty at Walmart. The problem with little rooster tails is that they tear up easily. So if you catch a big trout on these, they're very thin. The wire is very thin there, and so when a big trout grabs on, um, a lot of times they can tear them up. In fact, if I use one of these basically all day, usually by the end of the day. I kind of have to throw it away because the wire in there will, will all be bent up, and then it's spinning underwater a ton. And so. Um, you you kind of have to, uh, that's one thing, they're cheaper, but then they're also cheaper. They don't last as long. But rooster tails, it's something about with that little bit of hair on there um, at the end. It's just trout love those. And then we have here um, Panther Martin spinners. Now, if you've watched my last video, I tried these kind of for the first time. This color is black with yellow dots on it. It's not silver, so it's not flashy like all the other ones. And I thought, you know what, the water is ultra clear, so I'm going to give these a try. And... Um, and, sh and I caught three trout on them, actually. So I'm now a big fan of the black with yellow spots. Panther Martins are one of the most expensive spinners. Uh, they can run between four or five bucks, but they're, a, they're just a solid spinner. Um, they last for a long time as long as you don't get them snagged, and they just catch a lot of big trout. So I really like the old Panther Martin there. And so, um, oh, and then here, oh, here was something else. So I was at Walmart uh, the other day, and they had a dollar bin. This spinner here, I've never tried them before, but it was 99 cents. So if you guys are going, man, I'm kind of, I'm not, don't have a lot of money. I don't want to spend a lot of money on this thing, but I want to try some trout lures. Go to Walmart. That looks like a really, really solid spinner there. 99 cents. So I'm actually, I might do a video just on those because I'm going to buy a bunch and try them and kind of like give a review on them. So we got the jerk baits, we got spinners. Now let's move on to some bait here. When I'm out fishing, I um uh I always carry some bait with me because if trout fishing is tough, they won't be biting lures that much. And so um 
you always want to keep some bait on you. Now, well, let's see. Where do I start? So let's start with corn. Corn, um, I, always, I don't always, but corn is a great trout bait um, because it adds some flavor and some color to your bait. Now, I, I rarely use just corn all by itself. Usually, I'll put on a piece of worm, and then I will put on a piece of corn with it, especially in darker water, and that just seems to get the trout's attention. In fact, you can have, like, my brother can be fishing with just a piece of worm, and I can be fishing with a piece of worm with a little corn on it, and I'll catch about double the fish he can, he will be, because it just adds that the trout can just see it in the, from far away, and they'll swim right over um, to it. So, I always keep some corn with me. It's really cheap, too. This is, like, 98 cents or a dollar ten. For whole kernel, for just a, a whole can of whole kernel corn, and um, uh, great bait, the, or great bait. And the reason why this is important, uh, a lot of people use power bait. So people will, when they're when out trout fishing, to give uh, they'll just use power bait with a lot of glitter, very bright colors, and power bait's very expensive, between three and four dollars, sometimes more per can, and it's just not. Uh, it, that's just really expensive, and then it gets all over your fingers, and it comes off the hook very easily as well. And so I kind of back a long time ago, I started using corn as a substitute, and I've done just as well with corn as I do with power bait. Now a lot of people love power bait, so I don't I don't blame them for that. And apparently, in a lot of parts of the country, that's kind of all trout will bite on. So anyway, and then the other thing we got here is we got atlas, best bite natural salmon eggs. I love these little salmon eggs. If you guys watch my channel, I use these all the time. These are just little tiny salmon eggs. They smell awful, um, and so, but they really get trout's attention. In fact, if you watch one of my videos, I'm throwing a worm with a piece of salmon egg out, and I can't get this golden trout to bite. And finally, I switch to all salmon eggs. I put like three on one hook, and the golden trout swims right over and eats it. And it's this is very easy. Just carry in your tackle box or carry in your backpack. So if you always have a jar of those with you, I, I always keep a jar of them with me. So. Now let's move on to worms. Now here's something interesting. I always just use night crawlers. Pretty simple. Just put on a piece of night crawler for trout. But about, what was it, five or six years ago, all of a sudden, at least where I am in Idaho, red tiger worms started popping up in all kinds of the, in all the grocery stores and all the tackle shops. And at first I ignored them because they were way more expensive than the regular night crawlers. Um, but they were advertised as, number one, catching more fish because they were red. And... They lasted. Um, uh, they lasted a long time without being refrigerated. They don't have so right there. It's no refrigeration needed. But they're really expensive. And I was like, you know, that's just probably hype. And then one day I went into a tackle store, and they were the same price as the regular night crawlers. So I thought, well, I'll give these a try. And let's see how red they are. Let's look at a color difference here. I actually have, after using these a lot the past six months, having a hard time getting them out. Of after using these the last six months, I thought, do these guys really, does the color of them really matter? And the conclusion that I came to, let me dip them so you guys can see them clearly. So there's the night crawler, and there's the red tiger worm. As you can see, there's really not a lot of color difference. And that the conclusion I came to is you don't actually catch more trout on the red tiger worm versus the night crawler. But here's why I started using red, uh, the red, uh, red tiger worms is that they last in your tackle box in the summertime way longer. You don't have to keep them in a cooler, which is super nice because you don't, if you're walking along shore fishing, now if you're in a boat, you don't care. You always have a cooler with you anyway. But when you're walking along shore fishing, it, um, you trying to have as little equipment as possible, at least I am, especially now that I'm lugging all this camera equipment around with me, um, all the time. And, uh, so I, these are great where I don't have to have a cooler now. I just stick these in my backpack or my tackle box and they're good. Even on the hot summer days, they're good all day long. They will not die. And so that's why now I've started to buy red tiger worms. So, um, if they're the, so anyway, that's my, might be something you guys want to consider if you're shore fishing, um, red tiger worms, like I say, don't be fooled by the red because they aren't really that red. Um, <laughs> there's pretty much no color difference, but they last really, really, really well in the heat. So that's a new option besides just the regular night crawlers. Um, 
that's a, that's a new option. So that's what I always carry for bait. Like I say, a lot of guys use all these different eggs and stuff like that, and these are my favorite. Um, that you could probably go out with a few hooks and some sinkers, and as long as you had a jar of this, you would have a you could pretty much catch trout every time you went to your lake with you know, your trout filled lake or stream. I just love these salmon eggs, but I also carry usually a variety with me if you watch my videos. So that's why. So there, there's the bait there. And um, now let's move on to plastics. I'm not going to go through plastics a lot because plas I'm, not, I'm still in the experimental stage. These are Dry Creek Outfitters tubes. Um, I did catch some fish on them. If you watch one of my videos from last summer, I caught some trout. As you can see again, look, there's the yellow in each one of them. Uh, this was just recommended to me by a guy um, at a tackle store. And, uh, and every single packet he handed me had some yellow in it. And I asked him about that, and he said, oh, man, with plastics, with trout, you got to go with the yellow. And apparently in Utah, now this is, I don't know if we have any Utah viewers out there. Uh, Utah, they've been killing, uh, there are several lakes and stuff where if you tie on any kind of a little tube or something like that, um, you will, you'll catch trout all day. Apparently it's one of the best um, yellow, yellow tube, uh, yellow tubes, any kind of yellow plastics is Great. So I'm not going to cover those a lot, but this is how you want to rig them. If you do decide, if you go to the store and you buy some little yellow or any kind of plastics for trout, take a jig head. That. Take a jig head and uh, put it inside the tube and then just cast it around, drag it on the bottom. Or what I do sometimes is I'll just go weightless, like when I am um, when I'm in the uh, – if I'm in the really shallow streams fishing for trout, I'll just go totally weightless, and I just have a little drop shot hook that I hook to the very front of it, and I'll catch trout that way. If you want a little bit of weight, just add a little split shot to it. But I'm still in the experimental stage, so I really can't give advice as far as like, hey, one of these is, is just a great lure. I'm still, um, I'm still experimenting. So that's that. Now, let's talk about line. Line is extremely important in trout fishing. Why? Because I can be fishing right by my brother, who's using 10-pound test line, and I'm using 6-pound test line, and I'm catching double the fish that he is. And line, the line diameter is very, very important. Um, a lot of trout, if you're fishing like in a trout stream that's very clear, like here in Idaho, we have a lot of very clear rivers, and so you want to use 4- to 6-pound test line for trout. I also use, you see on there it says fluorocarbon. I also use fluorocarbon because it's less visible in clear water and it sinks and it can just cast a little bit farther than other lines. Now, if you're brand, brand new to fishing, there are three different, well, there are actually a lot more than that, but there, there's three basic types of line. There are floor, there's fluorocarbon, mono, and braid. We're not going to go through those, but fluorocarbon is a type of line that sinks. Mono and braid do not. So, um, and this can cast very far. This I got this actually just from Walmart. In fact, I ran to Walmart right before I made this video. This was five bucks because I couldn't remember how much I paid for it. A little spool as 100 yards of strand fluorocast. You can put it on your uh, reel. Five dollars, six pound test. That'll last you all year. So be very careful. If you are brand new to fishing, fishing and you're like, I don't even, you know, I'm using my grandpa's old fishing reel and rod. What kind do I use? Um, it, check the line. Cause a lot of times, uh, f when you brand buy a brand new reel, they come pre spooled with 10 pound test line. And in a lot of clear streams and stuff, that's just, you're going to have a lot of trout following your baits, but they're not biting it. So that's very important to have. If, if I could recommend to you guys one, one, like a uh, line, six pound test, for trout, it's just an all-around great lure. You don't need super heavy line for all of these light. Gosh, it looks like a crime scene over here. Um, you don't need a super light or a super heavy line for these little tiny lures. So six pound test. If you're brand new to fishing, I have this tied on all year long. Six pound test. Every once in a while, I'll uh, pick up one of my spinning rods, like my bass rods. I have like ten pound test. If we're fishing in like a area where the water's super dirty and I don't care. Six pound test, otherwise 95% of the time. Now, let's talk about rods and reels. So this here is a travel rod if you watch my channel. I've used this rod twice now, once in Oregon, once in Hawaii. It's pretty sweet. It's an ugly stick, and it breaks down to four pieces like this, but then it gets into a rod that's six foot, um, six inches long. But, it, I mean, you can see how small it is. You can carry that anywhere. Um, 
And so, uh, so anyway, ugly stick fishing rod. I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description if you're watching it on the replay. Um, this now this is a little bit expensive. It's sixty bucks, but after using it now for a few weeks total. It is a fantastic little uh, fishing rod, and it, uh, it gets the job done when you want to travel. So if you guys go on vacation a lot or you drive to you know your relative's house and they have a trout stream that you always want to fish at, um, I highly recommend getting this thing because it can pack down and just it can fit in your backpack, fit in a suitcase. Very portable. I'm so glad I got this and I use this. I'm using this more and more now. So ugly stick. Oh, it's called a, sorry. It's called a GX2. Let me show you guys. This is my first live stream. So after, I'll watch it again when I'm done and be like, see all the mistakes I made. And uh, anyway, uh, Ugly Stick GX2 breaks down until what? That's like 18 inches. So anyway, um, great little travel rod. And then reels. Let me, just a second. Let's talk about fishing reels. I have this phone on a tripod. All right. So this is a... It's a funny name. Tissafun Real. It's called the Honor version. It's a pretty sweet color. It's red. Um, now, normally, I'm all about a type of... See, I don't want to get too technical. There's a there For you guys who are new to fishing, there are a whole bunch of different brands out there, but one of the top ones is Shimano. Shimano's like... It's just the best out of all of them. However, Shimano can be expensive. Um, so, sometimes if people are getting into fishing, they'll look at a Shimano fishing reel that's 150 bucks, and they'll be like... You know, no way. So, um, and then I'm all, I have mostly Shimano rods and re uh, sh mostly Shimano reels. And so I'm a big fan of them. But last summer, I got um, an email from a company called Pissafun, and they wanted me to test out some of their fishing reels. And they actually wanted me to do a review video. I said, well, I don't do review videos of things I haven't tried. So if you send me a couple, I might do a review video on them if I like them. And they said, okay. And so they sent me a couple fishing reels. And if you watch my videos, um, these reels have been in like pretty much every single one now, um, uh, especially when I'm trout fishing. So this reel at the at right now is 60 bucks on Amazon, but sometimes it can go on sale. But the reason why this is such a good reel is it can go in salt water and fresh water. And if you're new to I'll just assume that a lot of people are new to fishing because this is a basic tutorial. To get a fishing reel that can go in salt water and fresh water for only $60 is really good because when they make a fishing reel for salt water, they have to make all the screws, all the parts to it super, um, uh, they have to make a, a special metal that doesn't rust. And so the reels are a lot more expensive than just freshwater reels. Well, this reel, I've been using it for almost a year now. It's still super smooth. It can go in salt water and fresh water. And um, uh, it goes salt water and fresh water. It's still super smooth. I don't even know what else to say. It's, it's a great reel. And it's around $60. So especially for you guys who are like in Florida, if you switch back and forth between salt water and fresh water all the time, I highly recommend these because 60 bucks is a bargain. I thought, you know, they're so cheap. They can't be that good. They can't last that long. It's been a year and it still is running great. And so, anyway, I'll put a link to this one in the description. I was actually pleasantly surprised. I have two of these. And if you watch my, my Hawaii ones, when I go to Hawaii, uh, my Hawaii videos, I use this one in a bunch of them. Um, and it works like a champ in the salt water. And so, if you're, if you, or maybe you live in California, I have a lot of California viewers. If you go uh, freshwater fishing one day, then you go to the coast the other day, you don't have to worry about switching to your salt water reels. Um, uh, if you have this one. So I uh, really highly recommend it. 60 bucks. You can't beat that. And then of course I pair it with the travel rod. And um, that's my little setup that I carry around. You're not going to catch anything super big, especially if you're fishing in the ocean with this little ugly stick in the reel. But this fits inside your backpack or inside a carry-on really easily. Highly recommend it. And um, you can stow it in the garage really easily if you're Doing that anyway just I, I just really highly recommend this I was pleasantly surprised because I thought for 60 bucks there's no way that a saltwater and freshwater reel can be uh, this good but so far it is let's talk about my main trout um, let's see I'm gonna switch you guys around here just a second do, 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 do. there we go okay what am I doing all right here we go um so, let's see. 
try to break it on the ceiling. This is another piece of Unreal. This is a Venom, though. And this Venom is $40 on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. I don't think they sell in stores yet. Uh, because I, I don't think they sell in stores yet. Same thing. This goes in salt water and fresh water. This is just a smaller uh, version. And so I really, really like this one for trout. And if you watch my videos the past year, I think this reel has been the one I've used in every single trout video. And it's $40. Goes in salt water and fresh water. Same thing. Still super smooth. Um, but I know that it's just the same thing. I was very, very surprised. And if you watch, if, if you don't believe me that I love this reel, just go back through and watch all my trout ones. And this reel is the one I'm using in every single trout video. And that surprised me, I guess, because Shimano is the nicest company. Well, one of, I think it's the nicest one out there. Um, but it's very expensive. Like I say, I still love them. I still have lots of ones, but lots of Shimano reels. But when it comes to the, uh, when it comes to quality for cheaper, the, these reels are, are really good. And then, as far as rods go, I want to, this is a little bit of a tricky Gosh, I'm trying to ruin this thing on the ceiling. This is a little bit of a tricky subject because there's so many different options out there. You can go to Walmart and you can buy a fishing rod for like $10. Then you can turn around and you see another fishing rod for $400. And it's like, that's quite a spread. What, uh, what do I choose? And I always go with Mojo Bass. Mojo Bass spinning rods. Uh, or bait casting rods. If you watch my videos, I this is in every single one. Now, why do I like these so much? They're um, they're not too bad of a price for the quality. They're incredible quality. They're very sensitive, and I really abuse my fishing rods when I'm out. As far as I shore fish, I'm kayak fishing. I use them for sturgeon. Like I pretty much use them for everything, and so I'm not a very and I use them like every week, several times a week. And these Mojo Bass rods, I've still had, if you guess when I got this rod, 2011. I won it for getting second place in a fishing tournament in 2011. I still have it. Nothing is wrong with it. There are no broken guides. There never have been any broken guides. No broken rod tip. And so to have, it's 2018 at the time of filming this, to have a reel for, or a rod for seven years and nothing goes wrong with it is incredible. So... Ever since then, I've started to use these more and more until these have pretty much replaced, Mojo Bass rods have replaced all the other rods I used to buy. Um, it's made by St. Croix. I don't know if you guys can see it. Gosh, it looks blurry. I hope um, hope it's not blurry. Now, the problem with these is these are 110 bucks, which sounds like a lot to most people. But if you spend $110 and then you have a fishing reel for seven, eight, 10, I don't know, 15, how long is this gonna last? 15 years, that's not a lot of money to spend. So if you're, now, it's a lot of money to spend, especially if, if you're a, you go, you go hard. But, but if you are just a person who you're like, you're a fair weather fisherman, that's what we call guys who just go every once in a while on the weekend, you might wanna go to Walmart and just buy like a $40 uh, setup. And I'll actually be doing some more videos soon of the, um, uh, of, of, of how to like budget fishing more because that's what I used to do when I was younger budget fishing and now of course now that I'm older I have my own business and I can afford the nicer stuff um, but I, I did budget for the longest time so I, I kind of know what to do there but you can go to Walmart and you can get all set up for fishing a fishing rod reel and line for like $30 and that'll last you if you just go on the weekends in the summertime every once in a while but if you guys are out there who are really getting into it you find yourself going fishing all the time Mojo Bass. This isn't a sponsorship or anything. I just love these fishing rods. And there are a lot of expensive ones out there. There are $300, $400 G. Loomis ones, and I've had those don't last near as long uh, as that. At the end, somebody asked, can I ask a question? At the end, I will be answering, why is it frozen? Uh, at the end, I will be answering all questions and especially all Super Chat questions. Now, on my end, my video is frozen. If I could see some comments. Is the video frozen? Because I don't want to keep going and the video is frozen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm getting texts from people. Huh. What the hey? Well, that's weird. Sorry about this, guys. I don't even know. Hmm. Frozen. Okay. Well. Let's see. So you guys can hear me still, but you can't see. I don't know what to do. Try tapping on the screen. Let me try switching it around. 
Weird. I don't know what to say. Um, I've never had this before. <laughs> At least it wasn't like frozen when I'm like looking like a total Nimrod. Huh. Very strange. Um, let's see. I, I don't really know. <laughs> I might have to stop this live stream and then, and then, uh, yeah, might have to live, like, stop this live stream and then come back. I have no idea. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop it. I don't know what else to do because it just keeps, I thought it, maybe it would come undone. So, <laughs> yeah, microwave it. Adam Fishy. All right, I'll be, I'll be right back in like literally just two seconds. Sorry, guys. <laughs> 